Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm here to do my January reading wrap-up. So I read this. It's heavy, and it won't go in the shop, but I read this. Uh, so there are 20 things here. There are 15 books and 5 comics, so is that 20 books? Or is that 15 books? Or is it like 17.5? Well, let's just get started, I guess. Uh, so, first off I read Poems of the Decade, an anthology of the forward books of poetry by, uh, this is selected by William Seacart, and this is, uh, actually if you watch Jen Campbell, you, you will have seen in her recent video, she announced she's going to be the judge for the forward poetry prize in 2018, and uh, yeah, this is, I think this is, this is just the last decade's worth of uh, poetry. This brings together more than 100 poems from the many thousands submitted to the forward prizes for poetry in the first decade of the 21st century. And yeah, it's a great little collection of contemporary poetry. I enjoyed it. Four out of five stars. Next up, we have some non-fiction. So this is Cats Behaving Badly by Celia Haddon. It's like a little hardback. And it's all about just why cats do things, like understanding territory, the hunting range. Chapter three, the educated kitten. Oh, there are some cattails in it. The indoor cat, what cats make good indoor cats. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was okay. Celia Haddon is meant to be Britain's best known cat agony aunt. One of the problems with this, and this still sticks out to me, even though I read this at the start of the month, was that the entire thing was like an advertisement for Fellaway, which is like a plug-in diffuser for cats. And just all of the answers to all of the questions were like, oh yeah, get a fell away, it'll be fine. So for that, it really annoyed me. So, I mean, the advice in it was okay. It also got kind of repetitive as well. Like, it would be the same question asked in different ways with the same answer in different ways. And, you know, it could have been half the size and, uh, you know, only the one or two as opposed to a couple dozen fell away references and it would have been alright, so 3 out of 5. Then we have Agatha Christie, Sleeping Murder, and this is about someone who has, uh, they, they move into this house and they kind of remember it, but they're not sure why they remember it, and uh, they start to have like these flashbacks to their childhood when a murder was committed, and they, they sort of, they saw this murder happen, but there's no evidence of it actually happening, and they think they're going crazy, and then, you know, Miss Marple comes along, and, uh, I think this is the one actually where Miss Marple, Miss Marple was like, let the sleeping murder lie, you know, don't dig up these old secrets. And then they went ahead and did it anyway, and of course everything sort of went badly wrong. Like after they started digging into it, more people died, and then the, I guess the investigation started for real. And I mean, this is an Agatha Christie Miss Marple book. It wasn't necessarily my favourite, but it was good. So four out of five for this one. Then we have The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware, and I actually posted a full review of this, which I'll link to below, where I basically, I just took the piss out of the whole book. I mean, there were a lot of things wrong with it. For, for some reason she kept, she was obsessed with how fat all the men were and how skinny all the women were, and then her main character had anxiety disorder, but for me, as a sufferer from anxiety disorder, I didn't think it was a very good repre representation of it. But, uh, I mean, it still kept me reading and I read it in like two days, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, and you can uh, check below for the link to find out more on that. Then, I read Dune by Frank Herbert, and I read this for January, and so, as you're watching this, like one of my most recent videos is my sort of January wrap up where I talk about this book. And uh, I really enjoyed it actually. It did slow towards the starts of parts two and three. It is like this old, big, long, old sci fi ballad. I mean, it, it turned 50 recently. Obviously, I've seen the film as well. And um, yeah. Check out my video on January below for more information on what I actually thought of this one. And also check out Plots and Points on YouTube because he talked a lot about June for January as well. And, uh, well, I mean, shout out to my other participants as well. So Sylvia K read it. Uh, we had Bree from Peachy Fishy Books. Graham, Graham Quigley. And I'm sure there's someone else. Oh, Mindy from Mindy's Book Journey. Sorry, Mindy. So, yeah, check, check, that, check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and four out of five again. Then we have Hindu Sex Aliens by Larry Weiner, and this is an indie book. This is the third book in a trilogy, and it's called The Island Trilogy. And basically it follows this ad executive who then gets this job with this weird company that owns these islands. And um, in the first book it was zombies. The first one was Paradise Rot, and that had zombies. Then we had Once Again with Blood, which was vampires. And then Hindu Sex Aliens with Hindu Sex Aliens. And like the first two books, like, they were, they were kind of, you know, they're, they're indie books and so they're not 
they're fairly experimental, but this one just took it to a whole new level and got really meta, like the author himself was a character in it. I've actually filmed a full review of this, which I haven't posted yet, so if you want to see that, let me know in the comments and I'll try and prioritise it. And I think I gave this one a 4 out of 5 as well. But, having said that, read the other books in the series first. Then, we have these random American Gods uh, comics, I guess they are, adaptations by Neil Gaiman, P. Greg Russell, Scott Hampton, and Glenn Farby. And I actually read these out of order by accident, although I don't have all of them anyway, so I had issue number 8, which I started with. Then, issue number 2, which is this one. And then, issue number 5, and... Um, yeah, they made me doubt whether I actually enjoyed American Gods as much as I thought I did, because I didn't enjoy the adaptation, but I do remember enjoying the original novel. But for these, I think the best I can give them each is 2.5 out of 5. I, the, the magic had somehow gone, you know. Like, when I read the novel, I was really engaged with it and really enjoyed it, and with these, these comics, I just it, it just didn't work for me. It felt like a money grab. I feel like if they're going to do that, they should have just done a graphic novel and released it as one thing. Anyway, next up we have Midworld by Alan Dean Foster. So this is Todd the Librarian's favourite book, which is why I picked it up. It's kind of, I, well, I guess it's marketed as a sci-fi, but I think it has quite a lot of elements of fantasy as well. And again, I did another uh, review on this one as well. It's basically about this guy called Bourne who lives in this sort of treetop world and then these sort of like sciencey people find them and then they're fighting all these creatures of the jungle and it's a great little commentary on like the dangers of scientific progress and I really enjoyed this did I I can't remember what I gave it I think I might have given it a 4.5 or a 5 because it was good we'll see that's what I gave it down there then we have Girl with a Pearl Earring, and this is by Tracy Chevalier, and this is historical fiction. It's based on this painting by uh, Johan Vermeer. I can't say names with foreign accents, I'm sorry. He's a famous painter. You've probably heard his name. I've heard his name, I just don't know how to say it. And this follows a girl called uh, Griette, who basically goes to become household help for Vermeer, and then eventually, through this sort of chain of events, ends up being in a painting. And it's this painting, it's a well-known painting. And uh, again, there's a video review of this, which I'll link to. I actually got this because uh, Hannah Tay on Booktube, she has an Etsy store, and one of the things you can get is her favorite book, and it's kind of like a mystery book. So I, I bought that, and it was this, and it was lovely. And I gave it a five out of five, I think. Hello, Biggie. Hello. All right, I'm taking the tripod and we're freestyling. Look. Hey, Biggie. Say hello to the camera. Boop, 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 boop. No, don't. Oh, are you sitting there? Are you sitting? That's, he's sitting, that's where the tripod normally goes. You're trying to be really sneaky as though we don't all know you're going for that bowl of breadcrumbs, Biggie. Don't eat the breadcrumbs. You don't like breadcrumbs. Okay, mate. Right, well, I'm going to go back to doing my wrap-up now. Okay, right. We're going to have to move around a bit now. Don't worry. Don't worry. Can I put this down, please? Is that all right? Yeah? All right. I think we're good. I think he's happy. Okay, next up is The Poetry Pharmacy by William Seacart. And uh, William Seagart is actually the guy who's involved with the Forward uh, Poetry Prizes. And I got sent a bunch of these books all. I, I won a competition for um, National Poetry Day. I sent him one of my poems. And this is one of many books that they sent me. Oh, he's off again. And um, yeah, this is Tried and True Prescriptions for the Heart, Mind and Soul. It's this beautiful little hardback. And uh, it's got like a kind of stitch texture. I don't think, let me try and get my face out of the way. But it's, oh, it's lovely, this book. It's really beautifully, like, really beautifully made. And, um, yeah, it lists, like, a bunch of conditions and then gives you a poem to go with them. So, for example, If by Rudyard Kipling is the poem for the condition of need for moral guidance. I will say, after a while, it got really weird, like, condition oppression. Okay, that's fine. What else we got? Sexual repression. Emotional repress. You know, making mistakes. Heartbreak. Losing the spark. Complacency and love. Rocky relationships, romantic boredom. Like sometimes it got a bit too specific and other times it got a bit too repetitive. But overall it was a nice little anthology. I mean, it was better for the poems themselves rather than for the descriptions that Seacart gave for each of them. But at the same time that helped to put them in context as well. And just for aesthetics alone, you can't give this anything less than a four out of five stars. Then we have Brian Epstein, a cellar full of noise. And Brian Epstein was the manager for the Beatles, which is basically why I bought this. 
one of my big problems with this is the first 40 pages, and bear in mind it's a 200 page book, the first 40 pages were all introduction, so it, it was kind of like, I, I don't know why the introduction was so long, like that was 20% of the book. The book itself was pretty good, the introduction was kind of condescending and also more outdated than the actual autobiography which was written in the 60s. And um, I did film a review of this as well, which I haven't posted yet. So again, let me know if you want me to post it. It is like half an hour long. I found a lot of things to say about this book. So we're just going to move on and give it its rating, which was a 3.5 out of 5. Stardust by Neil Gaiman. It was long and kind of boring. It left me in no desire to see the film. I've always found that Neil Gaiman is very hit and miss. And I either like it or I don't. And um, yeah, I didn't like this one. I gave it a 3 out of 5 because it's like professional. It's professionally done. It was just really dull and boring and again actually I did a review on this which again I haven't posted you've seen a theme here like I'm reading too many books to post reviews for all of them, but I'm trying to film them anyway because I find it's like a good exercise, you know, to talk about them, especially because I write I, I don't know if I've mentioned that by my books and so um, It's nice to talk about them This is another one that I filmed a review for which I haven't posted yet and this is an indie novel which uh, I don't remember asking for, but I received anyway. It's called Problems by Jade Sharma. You can see this is an uncorrected proof from Tramp Press. And this is basically about a heroin addict. And um, she's like a very unlikable person. She's also, it's first person, so she's an unreliable narrator. And um, yeah, I mean, she has some troubling beliefs. I, I still gave it a four out of five, I think. Then we had Star Wars, and this is a Loot Crate exclusive, uh, issue 001 variant edition by Aaron, Cassidy and Martin and those are surnames obviously and uh, yeah I got this from my girlfriend who got a bunch of these from old loot crates and this one surprised me I really liked it it had a lot of that Star Wars magic and it was a five out of five um a thing happened so if you watch my haul you might have noticed about halfway through the footage just went all like b bibbity bibbity for some reason and uh, yeah I didn't realize that had happened unfortunately however it had also happened to part of this haul so I'm now refilming part of this haul because I also forgot a book but now I've lost one of the things that I've read so just bear with me on this and we're gonna try and soldier on through anyway so then we have the book of dust by Philip Pullman and um, I have mixed feelings about this because the Northern Lights uh, book and that trilogy, the His Dark Materials trilogy, is basically my favourite trilogy of all time. And so this book had some, you know, it had some big shoes to fill. I've, I've read other Philip Pullman books as well. I actually really like his Sally Lockhart series. So, you know, I was kind of thinking the worst comes to the worst, it'll be okay. And it was, it was okay. It had too much kind of going into the backstory, I guess. The first three, four hundred pages, very little happened. And I get that with this world, you do want to see more about how the world works. But at the same time, you know, Northern Lights was good because it was an adventure book at heart. Whereas this is like a political thriller for 400 pages, except using a political system that you don't necessarily know much about. Especially if, like me, it's been a while since you read the original trilogy. I mean, you could read it as a standalone. But my feeling on this is that if I'd picked this up first out of all of his books as a standalone, I probably would have DNF'd it and not read any more Philip, Philip Pullman. It was fine, and I will be reading the rest of the series, but I can't give it any more than a 3.5. And uh, there is a review of this which I haven't posted yet. We had Alan Bennett, The Lady in the Van, and this is basically, it's a short memoir. Yeah, so this is about 110 page odd novella, and it's written by Alan Bennett, who's kind of a well-known playwright, I guess. Um, actually, all I've read of him has kind of been short non-fiction, to be honest, but I am trying to ho hopefully get some more of his work. But basically, this is about, this lady in a van who lived at the end of Alan Bennett's garden like at one point he had uh, an extension lead going out through the window of his house into her van and it's been turned into a film with uh, Dame Maggie Smith and I mean it was very well written and enjoyable enough but the problem is that the lady in the van herself was just an awful person and so you don't really care what happens to her like she was sympathizing with Enoch Powell at one point and he's a massive racist. Still, despite that, it was pretty good and I gave it a four out of five. Then we have Dungeons and Dragons, which is some sort of comic. It's a Loot Crate special, I believe, by Rogers, Dominguez, Wanan and DeVito. That was fun, Wanan. I mean, the artwork's good, but it's, it's just not a good story in itself, you know? Like, it kind of adheres to all of these sort of fantasy cliches and 
I don't know, I feel like it was trying to be funny while doing it, but it didn't make me laugh. So I gave this two out of five. Then we have Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, which is obviously a very booktube book. Yeah, so Kit Kats Can Read sent me this book after she finished reading it, and I just paid postage because I wanted to read this book, basically. And um, it was kind of exactly what I expected it to be. I mean, if you've read John Green before, you kind of know what to expect. I feel like his writing was has matured a little bit more here. You know, all the own voices stuff and the anxiety rep representation was great, although... Again, I, I mean, I have anxiety myself, and it really annoyed me some of the things that Aza was doing because I feel as though, you know, she she. Well, my my anxiety focuses around my health as well, and hers is more about this scab that she's got that she keeps picking, and then gets worried that it's going to be infected, and it's kind of like, well, stop picking it then, you know. <laughs> pick some other area of your body I don't know but then I realized I'm kind of similar because a lot of mine revolves around my stomach and stuff and I get stomach problems if I drink caffeine and beer a lot of people have said that they'd like to see more of like the murder mystery element of it which I kind of agree with but I'd already been forewarned that it wasn't a huge part of the storyline so for me it kind of didn't bother me that it wasn't but I can see how if you went into this blind and you sort of read the setup of the murder mystery you'd then want more but I think it worked quite well. The only, <laughs> there was, what was it that she said? Oh yeah, that was it. There was a line in this when at some point it was like, blah, 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 she said, askingly. And I don't know how that got through. I would have thought any editor ever would have picked up on that and just been like, don't, don't use the word askingly. Why didn't he just say she asked? I don't understand. I do not understand, but I still gave it a four out of five because it was good apart from that. All right. Okay, now we have, I don't even know what it was, it, it, it was another one of those Loot Crate comic things and I've lost it, I don't know where it went. Like I keep everything alphabetically on my bookcases and it, it's not where it should be, so I don't know where it went. What we're going to do here is we're going to play the corrupted footage version of me explaining this book. So, let's do that. And then finally, one that I left out of my wrap up. I've had such a nightmare filming this wrap up, I forgot to mention this book, then I filmed myself talking about this book and accidentally deleted the footage, then I discovered that the other footage was corrupted anyway so I might as well refilm this entire part of it, and then I finally remembered to talk about it. But this is Northern Lights by Philip Pullman and it's also called The Golden Compass in some territories, they made a very bad film out of it. Actually you should go and check out uh, Weena Wonders on Booktube because she's recently read Northern Lights and the Subtle Knife for the first time and she's currently on the Amber Spyglass and bearing in mind this is my favourite trilogy of all time it's really nice to watch somebody else kind of reading it for the first time so this was a reread for me and I did it via an audio book and this was for one of the challenges for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon so I think it was just reread your favourite book or reread your favourite series were kind of the prompts and this is my favourite book from my favourite series and I enjoyed it just as much as I thought I was going to do. My girlfriend listened with me as well. She said she thinks she enjoyed it more on audio than she would have as a book because there are some, I guess, some confusing words in it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was just as good as I, as I remembered it being. And there's a link down there to my full review of it. So anyway, those are the books that I read in January plus some comics, but we're just going to call them books for the sake of the numbers. Goodreads counts them as books. I mean... I don't know, I don't think it really matters. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on each of the books that I read. And if you've read any of them, let's talk about it in the comments. And in the meantime, please do hit subscribe for more videos and all that stuff. And I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye.